but it's slightly different from what the government is trying to communicate and what he said. He said that this will help simplify and reduce governments interfering and bring in more autonomy. How does this bring in more autonomy? It's actually the other way around. I mean, so what is the need to say that we need to audit, our people need to go in? This defeats logic for something which is independent, which does not take a penny. I am not saying this. The chartered accountant himself who is speaking on behalf of the treasury benches is saying that he does not take money so why are you auditing then? Why are you interfering in institutes and playing in an area which doesn't belong to you? When demonetization happened, there was a chartered accountant firm which the RBI had chosen to make sure to find out how much money was collected, how many notes were collected and the government's report was 99.5 or something like that, 99.9%. But there was a grey area where there was some transaction that we've done with our currency with neighbouring countries like Nepal. Now that money was, so it was actually above 100%. Now that auditing firm which is trying to be honest, trying to be very transparent, the following year was asked to leave. And Sir, I stand here to speak on the Chartered Accountants, Cost Works and Accountants and Company Secretaries Amendment Bill 2021. Sir, as I was growing up in school and college, these were professions we always looked up to. And somebody said, my son is a Chartered Accountant. The first thing is we are complimentary. Oh my God, what a competitive child, must be very bright. And like my friend, glorious, glorious profession, you're right. Like my friend Sumati just said while hearing the debate, she said, this is a meritorious batch because IIT, IIMs, my friend Jayant Sina, who also happens to be, who had got admission, IIT, IIM both. And being a chartered accountant are very good professions. So I appreciate the government's effort to bring and discuss this and bring in transparency. We, I think in this new world, years of technology, professionalism, I think globally, this is something we need to do, which is a good thing. But I really don't understand, like my colleague Sagwata Babu also talked about it, Mehtab ji, Raja ji, everybody talked about it. It's just what is really the need? There are these three verticals already doing a good work. If there is their own way of handling their issues, what is the need of bringing this, all of them under one umbrella? Is there a specific reason or an intention which, which methodology is going to Make sure there are no mistakes, it's a welcome step. But what is the solution to this? Because in your statement and objects, this is what they have said, that this is to provide for autonomy of the council of the respective institutes. Now I'm quite amused, either the treasury depart, I mean, the treasury benches are confused, I can't understand. But I will come to that because Bedia ji said, made a very nice speech. I compliment him, but it's slightly different from what the government is trying to communicate and what he said. He said that this will help simplify and reduce government's interfering and bring in more autonomy. How does this bring in more autonomy? It's actually the other way around. I mean, like Rajaji rightly said, that what is really the agenda? There is a hidden agenda. And I think I'd like to second what he said, that why are you taking the autonomy away of this institute by bringing in government? And one very good point he made. He was very happy to share with us that there is no money is given by any of, for, to run any of these institutes by the government. So if government, so that means these are privately run professional institutes for the last 70 years in this country. So what is the need to say that we need to audit, our people need to go in? This defeats logic for something which is independent, which does not take a penny. I am not saying this. The chartered accountant himself who is speaking on behalf of the treasury benches is saying that So why are you auditing then? Why are you interfering in institutes and playing in an area which doesn't belong to you? I mean, this is then no more a democracy, right? I don't want to use harsher words, but this is where exactly we are heading. So this is a very serious concern for me. Then he raised something about investors' protection. I second that. Every investor should be protected, sir. I'd like to bring to notice what Sagata Babu said. He talked about Satyam. I still remember growing up, sir, the American crisis, the Goldman Sachs dream. Every child all over the world wanted a job in Goldman Sachs. What happened? You know what happened. Then there was AA triple, then DHL, ILFS, like Dr. Satyavati said, 
everybody said, which is very interesting, and it's exactly what Modi ji, the Honorable Prime Minister said, that he said there are the four big boys who are the auditing teams. Now, what is interesting about the four big boys, which are spoken earlier in one of my speeches, is they will only audit, they will give you a AAA rating, they will only tell the bank that yes, this is a good company, and when it goes down, they will only say it's a bad. So how does this work? So achhaye bolne wala bhi wohi hai, galti nikalne wala bhi wohi hai, and then the bank, when it comes out, then I mean, who takes accountability of this? And Honorable Modi ji said the same thing. He said there were four big boys playing here in this game. There in India needs, by 2002, at least 2022, big eight. Now, have the big eight come or not? I really don't know. Because a lot of jingoism happens in this government, so I don't know. But really, where are we headed in this whole thing? And already there are multiple bodies and regulators. Do we really need another regulator? Or are these not strong enough? What existing regulation is there? Is my question to ask to this honorable government. Second thing, they've talked about balance sheets and issues. Lot of things about three-year audit, five-year audit, two-year audit. My question to you, sir, is if you are an auditor for three years of a company, somebody comes in according to this new rule and he's a whistleblower. What protection will you give the whistleblower? There is still a gray area in it. So will whistleblowers be protected? Now, this is something I don't have proof to, but this is what I've heard and I'd like to put it on. I'm happy to take it back if it is wrong. Let me put that uh, on the table. That I was informed, and it has come in some media uh, papers also, but I don't have confirmed because normally I like to table what I say. I like to authenticate what I say. When demonetization happened, there was a chartered accountant firm which the RBI had chosen to make sure to find out how much money was collected, how many notes were collected, and the government's report was 99.5 or something like that, 99.9%. But there was a gray area where there was some transaction that we've done with our currency with neighboring countries like Nepal. Now that money was, so it was actually above 100%. Now that auditing firm, which is trying to be honest, trying to be very transparent, the following year was asked to leave and the RBI is not using that form. So does that mean that when I'm a whistleblower, I'm being honest, when it doesn't suit the government, you will remove them? Then conveniently, you will use the statutory body for what? Then if you're really cleaning up the system, then why did you remove that agency? Can this government tell me that? So why, when you talk about transparency, you have to walk the talk, not just make legislation and do all this jingoism. They were talking yesterday, I was actually deeply pained because I'm very proud of our finance minister. I'm proud she's a woman, she leads. For the last two and a half weeks that we've been in session, mostly finance has been the department we've discussed. So I'm very proud of her, but I do see sometimes that she's getting a little unhappy nowadays, especially with all of us. And yesterday, sir, during the question hour, there was a question about non-performing assets. This is, what, this is all connected to it, that's why I brought it up. That auditors are questioned that, oh, because of you, aapne galti kari, phir ye non-performing asset ho gaya, phir pata nahi kya ho gaya, bank nahi ho raya, ye sab UPA ki hai. Okay, I'll bear the brunt. Hum se galti ho gai, hum mante sir, we were together in UPA. So, okay, we may have done something wrong and people sent us home for that. They did not put us back in. So, I accept that. But if you are saying that all the NPA is our fault, I just want to ask two questions to this government and I have many examples which I can do. You have said that you got in a law of IBC. Now, in IBC, what are the kind of haircuts you're going? NPA is a bad thing, but haircut is a good thing. <laughs> what is this logic, sir? I'll give you two examples, sir. Coast, and there are many like this. I'm just putting two quickly in forward issue. There's a company called Coastal Project. Now, this is very interesting, sir. This company was 8,000 crores. NCLT, it came to, it came to 1,500, from 8,000 to 1,500, NCLT. Now, what is the rule of NCLT? That if 66% people are willing, you can go for that price. If even one banker says no, it is rejected. Now, after this, it went into liquidation, which is the next step. This company, which was at NCLT going for 1,500 crores, went for 400 crores. Kiska nuksan hua? 900 crore ka, Bharat Sarkar ka, is gari baad ka. IVRCL, sir, another one, bigger company, 12,000 crores. What is the NCLT? 2,500 is the cost. You could have sold it for NCLT. Government said no. No NCLT. How much did they sell it for? 800 crores. 
2,500. Just in these two companies, more than 2,000 crores government of India has lost. Which is Sir, this is not only two companies. Saugata Babu, Jet Airways, the total if you did, and this is all in the newspaper. I am not some rocket science. I am not an expert on finance. I am just going by what I am reading in newspapers. Sir. Two lakh crores is what they claim is lost. Don't put Shunya Kiti Astar Maite Ka Tumala Arvindji, Aplala Kaya Maite Marathi Maitsala. Though two lakh crores is what this government has lost because they are confused. Ki NCLT Karenge, to Aro Pojaka, to liquidation me jane do. How? So are you purposely doing it? For some cronies, I have no idea. But where is purpose? I don't know who's doing it. But can they answer this question when they attack us on NPA? With full humility, we are doing this. But can you tell me, and all these rules that they are talking about, 2013, we had made a lot of bills. You were a part of that cabinet. You know, but they didn't make the rules. So things were delayed. And then it's very easy to blame us that, oh, these people have do done all these bad works and they are the ones responsible for it. It doesn't work like that, sir. And talking about autonomy, what worries me about them is every professional institute, this government wants to throttle the voice. How is it going to work? Look at this. This is very interesting. In this uh, objects and reasons they've written, what are the objects of this? Enhance accountability and transparency by providing an audit of accounts of institute firm by chartered accounts to appointed annually by a council of panels of auditor by the CAG of India and provide autonomy. What sense does this make? I mean, it almost feels like a joke because this is legislative mockery, sir. I mean, I, it's absolutely legislative mockery because all these confusing signals that they are giving us, there is one committee, another committee, somebody from the government coming, corporate affairs. What are you doing? And then my friend Shiv Kumar Udasi was talking yesterday of ease of doing business. Shiv Kumar Udasi, all this is not going to help doing ease of business, sir. This is only going to make a problem. Mohammed Bashir. Sir. Ease of doing business, what was the ranking when VP was there? For 10 years, what ranking was there? Now, what ranking is there? Can you tell me about that? Sir, I just want to bring to his notice, World Bank has stopped. The World Bank has stopped. Nothing will go on record except Supriya Sule. The World Bank, on his official note, has said, that ease of doing business is something that they have stopped looking at. Exactly. So I urge the treasury benches that okay, do not repeat to that. So you will carry on. Ease of doing business. So my request, even Bedia Ji said, Investors Protection Act. They want to invest. I did not want to talk about this topic on this. You want to? I'm happy to yield. You want to say something? No, no. One minute, one minute. He wants to say something. 